Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Dense fog in Gulf parts of northern India hits road and rail traffic. Ex Kerala chief Push Kamal Dehel becomes Nepal's new prime minister. An aid group suspend Afghan efforts after Taliban bars female staff from work. Now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday paid tributes to the sons of 10th Sikh spiritual leader Guru Gobind Singh who were bricked alive in the year 1704 for defending their faith during the rule of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. The Indian government organized several events as part of the Veer Bal Divas to remember their exemplary courage. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday took part in Veer Bal Divas, a program organized in remembrance of Sahib Zadas, the four sons of the 10th Sikh spiritual leader Guru Gobind Singh, who laid down their lives in the year 1704 while defending their faith during the rule of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. While the elder ones Sahib Zada Baba Ajit Singh and Jujhar Singh attained martyrdom in the battlefield, the younger two sons, Sahib Zada Zurawar Singh and Fateh Singh, were bricked alive at the tender age of seven and five by Mughal forces as they refused to forcibly convert to Islam. PM Modi said their sacrifice is exemplary as they stood against tyranny and they epitomized courage and failure. एक और मजहबी उन्माद तो दूसरी ओर सब में ईश्वर देखने वाली उदारता और इस सब के बीच एक और लाखों की फौज और दूसरी ओर अकेले होकर भी नीडर खड़े गुरु के वीर साहब जादे the Prime Minister also flagged off a march pass near the India Gate in capital New Delhi led by around 3,000 children. Several events including digital exhibitions were also organized across the country on the occasion to inform and educate the citizens, especially the young children, about the story of exemplary courage of the Sahib Zadas. Moving on, parts of northern India, including capital New Delhi, witnessed cold wave conditions with dense fog on Monday, with residents battling chilly weather and train delays. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions, but the millions of poor in the region are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and often die. As parts of northern India reel under a cold wave, Passengers on Monday at India's capital, New Delhi Railway Station, battled chilly weather and train delays owing to dense fog. Fog covered the skies of the city early in the day, making it difficult for people to see their way ahead while commuting. Dressed in multiple layers of woolen, passengers waited in the cold weather to reach their destinations as their trains were either delayed by several hours or cancelled. <laughs> पर वो कैंसिल हो गई है जैसे कि ठंडी के कारण तो इसलिए अब दो बजे की है अब फिलहाल हम बता नहीं सकते दो बजे आएगी कि नहीं आएगी अभी ये भी कोई गारंटी नहीं है Meanwhile, dense fog and cold weather in northern Amritsar and Ghazabad cities caused difficulties for people as visibility was slow and the temperatures dropped to a minimum of 6.5 degrees Celsius. तो उन दिनों सर बहुत पहन दिए थे आवाज़ आ रही थी साल हैं जो बड़ी प्रॉब्लम हो गई है According to the country's weather agency, cold wave conditions will prevail in northern India for the next few days and a yellow alert has been issued on account of a forecast for moderate to dense fog. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions, but millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and often die. 
In news from Nepal, former Maoist guerrilla leader and CPN Mao Center Chairman Pushp Kamal Dehel on Monday took oath as the Prime Minister of Nepal for the third time. The hell, backed by KP Sharma Oli's CPN UML, will remain in office till 2025, after which UML will take the office. The hell's Maoist center was early in alliance with Nepali Congress, but walked out from the coalition after it refused to back him for top office. Former Maoist guerrilla leader and chairman CPN Maoist center Pushp Kamal the hell, who still goes by his nom de guerre Prachanda, was sworn in as prime minister for a third time on Monday after being appointed for the post by President Vidya Devi Bhandari. The hell will head the new government for the first half of the five-year term with the support of KP Sharma Oli-led CPN UML and some other smaller groups. He will step down in 2025, making way for the UML to take over the office. The development came on Sunday when Prachanda's Maoist Center which was earlier an alliance partner of Nepali Congress, walked away from the coalition after former PM Sher Bahadur Deva refused to back Prachanda for the Prime Minister's job. Dahal had insisted that he should lead the government, while Nepali Congress has been adamant about its position of leading the government as the largest party. Post his walkout in the meeting with Deva, Dahal had talks with Oli and announced a new alliance backing him to hold the top office. Analysts said Prachanda was unlikely to provide the country with stability due to many coalition partners. He also faces serious economic challenges. Inflation is more than 8%, the highest in six years. Nepal, tucked between China and India, also faces dwindling foreign exchange reserves with an increasing dependence on imports of basic goods. Nepal has seen 10 government changes since 2008 when the 239-year-old monarchy was abolished. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah on Sunday announced PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif will lead the party's campaign in general elections of 2023. He said the elections will only take place in October next year, adding that assemblies will complete their full term. Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah on Sunday declared former Premier and PMLN Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif will lead the party's campaign in general elections in 2023, adding that assemblies will complete their full term. The remarks by Sanaullah came during his address at the PMLN Workers' Convention in Faisalabad. Limbasting at opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan, Sanaullah accused him of filing fake cases against PMLN leaders. Fake cases against us will be dropped, but you will face actions in real cases against you, he added. Nawaz Sharif was removed as Prime Minister in 2017 by the Supreme Court over corruption charges. He was convicted in the Avonfield reference in 2018 and was granted an eight-week bail in 2019 to travel to London for health treatment, but he has not returned since then. Mia Nawaz Sharif, Pakistan Muslim League known ki election campaign ko lead karenge. और इलेक्शन जो हैं वो अक्टूबर 2023 में होंगे असेंबलियां अपनी मुद्दत पूरी करेंगी पीटीआई चीफ इमरान खान हैज रिपीटेडली कॉल्ड फॉर स्नैप पोल्स इन द कंट्री सिंस हिज आउस्टर एज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन अ पार्लियामेंट्री वोट इन अप्रैल द डिमांड हैज बीन हाउएवर रिजेक्टेड बाय पीएमएलएन लेड रूलिंग कोलिशन सेइंग द इलेक्शंस विल बी हेल्ड एज पर स्केड्यूल इन लेट 2023 and in news from Afghanistan, as many as four international aid agencies have suspended their humanitarian programs in Afghanistan in response to the Taliban-run administration's order to stop female employees from working. The Taliban rulers last week also ordered an indefinite ban on university education for the country's women months after imposing a ban on secondary schools for girls. As many as four international aid agencies, including Save the Children, said on Sunday that they are suspending their humanitarian programs in Afghanistan in response to the Taliban-run administration's order to stop female employees from working. This comes as the Taliban administration on Saturday ordered all local and foreign non-governmental organizations not to let female staff work until further notice, as some had not adhered to the administration's interpretation of the Islamic dress code for women. 
Chief Operating Officer at Save the Children International, David Wright, said that women staff was crucial in getting aid and services to women and children, and the United Nations was leading efforts to negotiate with the Taliban over the issue. The Taliban have decreed that uh, women are not allowed to work for international non-governmental organizations and national non-governmental organizations. Um, as we have got 5,000 staff and community, uh, including community volunteers in Afghanistan. Uh, almost half of those are women. Uh, so essentially, if we were to keep working, we'd have to turn up, uh, turn up for work tomorrow with half our workforce missing. Taliban last Tuesday also ordered an indefinite ban on university education for the country's women months after imposing a ban on secondary schools for girls in March. The latest restrictions on women are likely to undermine the Taliban-run administration's efforts to gain international recognition and clear sanctions that are severely hampering the economy. Sri Lanka's worst economic crisis has made treatment suspended for hundreds of patients of cancer and other ailments in the island nation. Though the situation is improving gradually, hospitals countrywide have struggled to contend with severe drug shortages. A report. Priyantha Kumarasinghe, a 32-year-old vegetable farmer in Sri Lanka, was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2021 and started receiving treatment earlier this year, just as Sri Lanka's economy went into free fall, which made life even tougher for people like him. Amid crippling fuel scarcity and weeks of unrest, Kumara Singhe said he was unable to travel 96 miles between his home and Sri Lanka's main cancer hospital. That's why he decided to live in temporary accommodation near the hospital. He also said if he had been able to get treated properly during June, July and August, there was a good possibility he could have reduced the lung cancer. Kumara Singhe further said that the medicine is unavailable at the hospital and had to be bought from pharmacies and every single time of medication costs more than $2. The crisis in the country has had a lasting impact with hospitals continuing to contend with severe drug shortages and even sourcing basic like paracetamol and specialist facilities like cancer and eye hospitals running on donations. Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe has pledged to restore economic stability but has warmed reforms will be painful as the country strives to increase taxes to put its public finances in order and work with creditors. Ajanta Circus, one of the most famous circuses in India, entertaining audiences for the last 50 years, has resumed its shows in eastern Kolkata city after a long COVID-induced break. Children and adults alike are thronging and enjoying the circus show. Have a look. Residents of India's eastern Kolkata city are thronging the 50-year-old Ajanta Circus as it has resumed in the city after a long COVID-induced hiatus. Children and adults alike were seen enjoying the circus over the past weekend as gymnasts performed aerial shows wearing vibrant costumes. Even though the circus could not employ international artists or animals due to government and COVID-19 restrictions, it is making up for the missing pieces with other acts, including a fire show, which has been the main attraction. After so many years, we are very lucky to have such a circus in our, in our city here. It is very important for the children and the next generations to have such events, such entertainment sources, because nowadays there's only TV and mobile and laptops and they're addicted to it. I enjoyed it really much and the, all, the, the, all the games that were shown, I liked it and I liked the fire dance. Although street performances similar to circuses have existed in India since ancient times, modern circus came into existence 
During the 1880s, circus used to be the main entertainment for people apart from cinemas and theatres. People would make a beeline to watch animals like lions, tigers, zebras, elephants and bears perform. However, in the wake of the Indian government's ban on animal participation, the show nowadays is run with only dogs and jumbos. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.